Um, after I'd completed my master's at UJ a couple of years ago, I'd done a lot of research into uh, modular units and as part of that research, geometry raised its head. And I kind of decided to push my area of research into geometry as a subject in its own and started reading up about Pythagoras and ancient geometric kind of principles and things like that. And the more I read, the more I became fascinated and fascinated with the, with the story of geometry. And that's how this exhibition has come about over two years. The exhibition has been laid out in four chapters. Um, starting with geometry in nature, moving through to geometry and construction in the city, through to geometry in the human body, and lastly, geometry in the spirit. So the way that I've laid it out is so that it reads almost like a book from left to right, going around the gallery space, and then punctuated by small texts that tell you what the next part of the exhibition is about. Most people know me for mostly for bright coloured sculptures made out of found objects and what have you, like the traffic cones. Um, in this exhibition, the two things that shifted. One was that the entire show is either black or white or colourless. So that's a big shift. And then secondly, um, most people don't know that I can draw, for example. <laughs> so I've included drawing, printmaking, glass work, digital photography, digital printing. So it's, it's been a, a kind of shift away from what um, my comfort zone is into forcing myself to do something that's a little bit different. A lot of them were designed on the golden ratio, so all the photographic works, for example, are designed around that principle. Um, in the catalogue, we've actually divided each of the chapters with the golden mean spiral as a way of connecting it, and the shape of the catalogue is exactly in the golden mean rectangle. So we've... Um, in encourage that whole kind of geometric thing, even in the design of the works themselves. Well, I'm very, very honoured to be invited to show at Standard Bank. It's one of the primary um, spaces in the whole country, and it's an honour that only ever happens to somebody once in a lifetime, and God knows it's taken 35 years for that to happen. Um, but the entire process here, I designed the exhibition specifically for the gallery, because it is a circle with a square and a bigger square around it. So the geometry is implicit right from the gallery through to the works to whatever, and the viewer will be aware of that the whole way through the exhibition. The team that Santa Bank has put together, everything from the design of the catalogue, which is an exquisite document, through to the way that the management have actually worked, getting everything done, getting everything done on time, and then of course the incredible team that has handled the hanging of 130 works seamlessly done such a such a brilliant job so I'm eternally grateful to everyone at Standard Bank and for the whole team and of course to the um, my studio assistants and to the UJ students who are working as my kind of slaves on this project. Uh, can one say slaves in this day? Yes. Gordon's four exhibition chapters open up like a book. Sorry I had to. <laughs> Revealing digital photography, photopolymer etchings, blind embossing and pricking, light activation, digital animation, charcoal drawings, laser engraving, sculptures made of smooth cast resin, steel mesh, plastic cones, glass and vinyl, superwood, graphite and gold powder, and crystal glass. Despite these being all new works with unfamiliar shifts into photography, photopolymer printmaking and drawing, Gordon allows his visitor an opening glimpse of uncanny familiarity. Cones, viruses, coat hangers, but thereafter, we are invited into a new arcane, pared down, denuded, monochromatic world in which a certain alchemical transformation takes place. The mundane, the everyday, the taken for granted nudge us towards a change of consciousness towards the making strange of the everyday world in which our bodies live and move. Enjoy the exhibition. Well, I was amazed that so many people pitched up at the opening. Um, and it was great to actually see the gallery populated by people amongst the works. Uh, this is a very big and daunting space. And often uh, the works get lost in it. 
In this case, I think we've handled the space very well and to see it with people in it really makes a huge difference. It makes the works almost come to life. And of course, uh, David Payton, an, a longtime friend and an academic who's written quite extensively about my work and supervised my masters, who has done an excellent opening speech for me. And thanks, David, I really appreciate that.